So Brian, tell me, are there any don'ts that you found when writing about technology or magic? So what things really don't work for you? So I, I touched about on this a little bit earlier. Um, the idea of figuring out what you're not going to include. Um, you know, it's, and, th and this is a, this is a very basic writing thing, not just a magic and technology thing. Um, but if, if you have a world in which there's only swords and then, you know, like elemental magic or something like that, and then during the climax, you know, one of the characters pulls out a gun, you're gonna, you need to have a really good excuse for that. You need to have laid the groundwork for a gun to exist in the world. Um, and and that, that applies across uh, anything where you're going to have a very uh, differing technology levels. Um, and, and you want to introduce something that's high technology into a low technology world. Um, and, and so, because you can always... You can always go down, you know, if you have a science fiction, you know, a science fiction book or, you know, uh, whatever. A high technology level or whatever. Yeah, a high technology level. Uh, you can always have a guy with a knife, you know, or a club. You know, that's very basic stuff. Uh, you can always go down, but going up, you have to have a reason for it um, within the narrative. And, uh, and so, so having a flying car suddenly show up where is it from why is it there what you know what is your explanation um and and it can't be like a one-off you can't say oh a flying car arrived and then given us a lengthy explanation of some lost city that has flying cars and how they're coming to help and then the rest of the book there's aren't any other flying cars um, you know, you, you've got to have, you have to have a reason for everything you do in a book. Um, I guess that's the other side of Chekhov's gun in a way. Like yeah. if you, if you put it in there and don't use it, your audience is going to be like, Hmm, I want to know what's going to happen with that. And on the other hand, if you, um, use it and haven't foreshadowed it, that's sort of the other side of Chekhov's gun. If you see what I mean, where like, it just, it doesn't make sense. And why is it there? And this thing feels really disjointed. Well, and the big, the, like the most famous example of that uh, is is uh, the eagles in Lord of the Rings. Why yeah, didn't, I thought they were going to come up. <laughs> why didn't they just go and drop the stupid ring? You know, or why didn't they carry Frodo to dro drop the stupid ring? And you can, we can extrapolate reasons. Oh, you know, the Nazgul had big flying thing, dinosaurs, um, you know, whatever. You can come up with reasons, but it's, that's a big question mark to most readers. Um, now we let it go because it's Tolkien and it's just great in general. Um, but uh, uh, kind of modern readers, they are because of those, because of like Tolkien bringing a question like that up, modern readers are going to think that question. They're going mm -hmm. to think, you know, why, why is this bit of technology that you introduced here, why does it not apply to the rest of your magical world. And the same thing works within a magic system. If you do something with that magic system and then don't ever do it again, why? Right. You know? um, and so that's a, that's a big don't for me is the, and, and that's just a narrative world building, etc. That's a very broad brush to paint. Um, but, uh, but applies especially to technology. Um, especially in a, in a world that I create, you know, in, the, in like my powder mage stuff. It's, uh, you know, if I, if I introduced a steamship, I would need to give reasons why there aren't more of them or why the characters aren't taking a steamship this other time that they need to get somewhere fast, you know, things like that. Yeah, fantastic. Um, 